Math Monday! We've got some math for you and what we're going to be doing today is a concrete mix design. We're going to be doing concrete gymnastics today with math. Um, we've got this book, it's called our PMXDB, Practice Mix Design Book, where we've taken 21 mix designs from customers all over the U.S. and we've actually gone through ACI 211, uh, the absolute volume method. Now there's different books out there that go over concrete design in a couple different methods or a few different methods. We like ACI 211. It's the easiest method to use. Uh, it's the most direct approach. So let's start with the mixed design. So we've got a non-reinforced slab on grade, six inches thick, exposed to severe freestyle and de-icing salts. We've got to have a F prime, a C, a 4,000 PSI at 28 days, and we've got to design for a cubic yard. This is probably your 80% workhorse. Um, you know, if you take your air out, if you throw your air in, this is just a slab on grade. Uh, and I mean, this is most of the concrete that's going down, or to some degree, a large portion of the concrete that's going down. Our uh, materials that we're using, we'll have type 1, 2, C150, Portland cement, uh, a coarse aggregate river rock, so it's rounded, specific gravity, uh, and dry unit weight, dry rotted unit weight are all given to us from the uh, aggregate provider. Then we've got an ASTM C33 net or concrete sand. Uh, finest modulus and specific gravity is also included. We are not going to go over the moistures and absorptions and how that has an effect on design water. We're going to leave that for another video. But uh, this is basically what you got when you walk up to uh, you know, your plant, you got an end user. Oh, and the other piece, add admixtures as you see fit. And we're only going to be using two admixtures today. So, uh, yeah. Let's get on to it. All right, so our next step is to actually dive into ACI 211. And like I said, it's really easy. Now, I've got ACI 211 right over here behind me, so I'm going to be referring to it once in a while, uh, especially to give you the table numbers. And I think that's the most important type it, or part. If you, you make sure to follow the tables and the directions, it, this ACI 211 gives you a great starting point. But please bear in mind, this is only book creep. After you do this paper, then you have to go to the lab and make lab creep. And then once you perfect your lab creep, you transition from book to lab creep, then you have to transition to real creep. So this is not the only means and method that you have to use to get your concrete idea to the field, but this is your starting point. Getting into ACI 211, a slab on grade, you go into table 6.3.1, it's the first step. And you really aren't thinking, you're just picking out. So it actually tells you for a pavement and slab, your maximum and minimum slump, three to one inches respectively. And that's the first place that we start and we write that down. So we say a slump, our slump is gonna be two inches plus or minus one inch. So, you know, normally the way I design, I go for the maximum, so a three inch slump. When I worked out the field pacing slabs, I would want as high of a slump as I could tolerate. What I mean by tolerate, if there's a certain slope, you want too high of a slump, so it kind of um, Anyway, so we got a two plus or minus, we'll probably use a three on that. Um, from there we go to our second table. So on the very next page, with that one inch maximum aggregate size that they gave us earlier on, the slump, which is three to four inches, or our maximum is three inches, we choose 295 pounds of total water. But here's the thing, there's a note underneath that tells you if you've got rounded rock, you can subtract 25 pounds of water for air and train concrete. And that's what we're gonna be using. So that's 270 pounds of water minus 25 pounds from that note gives us 245 pounds of water. Here's the thing. We're in a severe to moderate free, or moderate to severe freestyle environment. Um, and you know you can assume we're in Colorado, Michigan, Minnesota, where we need a certain amount of air in the concrete to allow that water place to run when it freezes. Um, so we've got an air of 6%, and that's going to come from that same table using the aggregate size, the one inch max on the uh, diameter, and you go all the way down where it says severe exposure, and it tells you 6.0. And we're going to be using an air training admixture to get to that. Our strength, 4,000 PSI, leads us up to the next table. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to strength, 
especially once we get into our plant, we need to throw a pretty significant factor of safety. So a 4,000 PSI mix that's never been tested before, never been used in the plant, we actually need to bump that up into the 1,200 PSI. So this is actually going to be 5,200 PSI, but for intents and purposes of this, we're going to stick with this 4,000 PSI, and what we're looking for right now is our water cementitious ratio. Now here's the thing. Y'all really haven't done any mathematics yet. You're just choosing shit from tables. And as you can tell, this is not a very difficult process, and as long as the end user and the material provider gives us enough information, we can get a nice starting point. So our water cementitious ratio based on an air and train mix uh, for 4,000 PSI is going to be 0.48. So that's that boy, bad boy there, table 6.3.4A. There's a second one and there's a check on this. As engineers and concrete formulators, we always have to recognize that there is a certain standard deviation and accuracy on the material that we get. And that's just inherent of the material that we work with. We're using rock and sand that has a very wide range for its gradation. And then we're also using a Portland cement that the chemical composition and the performance of it has a wide range. So everything we do, we put a factor of safety on it just to make sure that we're going to make that strength. Because we haven't even factored the end user, the contractors, or the driving time. So we're always putting these factors of safety in there, even in the tables. So this next table, table 6.3.4 point, or 6.3.4B, gives you a factor or a safety check where it says, you know, if it's a thin element, you're exposing it to a nasty or a nastier environment, you got to make sure that your water cementitious ratio isn't above you know, 0.45 and 0.40. For all intents and purposes, for us, we fall under all other structures. All other structures for uh, exposed to freezing and thawing, it says it can't be below or above, excuse me, 0.50, uh, but we're at 0.48, so we're actually good to go. Um, and the last piece of information, we got a one inch size aggregate, uh, finest modulus of our sand is 2.85. And then we also had our specific gravity for our uh, rock and our sand, uh, and we're going to use that here in a second. But this is the point where we start doing math. So this method, the ACI-211, uses something called the absolute volume method, where we know that we're selling one cubic yard of concrete. Man, i got to figure out what to do with my hands. So we are selling one cubic yard of concrete, and one cubic yard of concrete has 27 cubic feet. So we're actually going to allocate all those cubic feet to all these different materials that we're using. So the first thing is, how much volume are we getting from our water? So we take 245 pounds of water in that cubic yard and divide it by our unit weight of water, which is 62.4. Now this is gonna be a common theme. So based off of that, we've got 3.92 cubic feet out of our 27 cubic feet that's being allocated for water. The next thing is our cement. We've got 245 pounds of water divided 0.48 because our water cementitious ratio is our weight of water over weight of cementitious equals is 0.48 and that gives us 510 pounds per cubic yard for our total cementitious. We divide that by your unit weight of Portland cement which is normally the specific gravity of Portland cement 3.15 times 62.4, which gives us a volume of 2.6. Ooh, so the next thing is air. And air is pretty easy to calculate. You're not going to be using the same method. It's 6%. That means 6% of our total volume is air. So you take 6% and multiply it by 27 cubic feet, which gives you 1.62 cubic feet. So again, you can see that we're stripping and ripping away from that 27 number to come up with our overall volume of concrete. So the next thing that we do is the heck. The next thing we do is we go back to our tables. Yeah, you have to cut that piece out. Um, and uh, we've got to use this table 6.3.6 .6, to determine the amount of coarse aggregate, the weight of our coarse aggregate that we're using in our mix. And it's based on the size of our aggregate, the fineness modulus of our sand, and that dry rotted unit weight. So based off of this table, 
we've got one inch maximum size of the aggregate. The finest modulus that we had, which was a 2.85. When you look at your table, it gives you a number or, or this volume of coarse aggregate per unit volume of concrete. This is a number that you multiply all that shtick by. It gives you a 2.8 to 3.0. Well, we have a 2.85. So you can actually do linear extrapolation or you can just lean to one side versus the other. And that's what we did here. We actually went with the middle value that um, uh, our volume of blah, 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 blah is going to be a 0.66. So we use this 0.66, multiply it by our dry rotted unit weight, which is 98.5 pounds per cubic foot. Multiply that by our volume, because here we're using a volume of coarse aggregate per unit volume. So we're doing that unit. So we actually have to multiply it by our total volume to get 1755 on our design yeah. aggregate. Now that's our weight per cubic yard. We divide that by our specific gravity of our rock that we get from our supplier, 2.62 times the unit weight of water to give us 10.73 cubic feet for our coarse aggregate. And really what we've done is we've used 18.87 cubic feet out of our 27 cubic feet for all those materials. Now our leftovers our 8.13, that's going to go to our sand. And what we do is we take that 8.3 cubic feet, multiply it by the specific gravity of our sand, and our unit weight of water is 62.4 pounds. We've got our known volume that we have left. We have our specific gravity. Now what we need to do is from that specific gravity, create a pounds per cubic foot and multiply that by our known volume to give us the weight that we're using for this cubic yard of concrete of sand. Um, so that's multiplied by 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, and that's our unit weight of water. So our specific weight gravity of water is 1.0. Our specific gravity of all these other materials is some other factor. So we just take that specific gravity of that material, multiply it by the unit weight of water to get the unit weight of that material. It's, it's unit conversion. But we do that, we get 1319 on our pounds per cubic yard for our concrete. But these are our final weights. You know, we got a 13.9 on our sand, our 17.55 on our, our rock. We've got 245 pounds on our water and 510 pounds on our total cementitious. And that's, that's our mix design. Now, this is our design mix in the lab or, or at the plant level. What you're going to want to do, and I think we even said this, is that we're gonna break it down per cubic foot or 1.25 cubic feet. Um, and if not, we will include it in the comment section. Or but uh, you've also gotta take into account the absorption of the rock in the sand, the moisture on the rock in the sand, because that's gonna bring, either bring or take a certain amount of water from your batch water or your design water. Um, and we'll be doing that in another video, but at the very least, we wanted to do some concrete gymnastics with math and I think this is a fun little exercise. If you've got any questions, comments, throw them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go Concrete Beard Asphalt!